thank you for coming out on such a chilly day. I would like to ask you to please silence all cell phones because you're not going to want to miss a single minute of Tom Porter's presentation on Saratoga Winter Club. Thank you. Thank you. Um, why is speed skating club called the Saratoga Winter Club? <clears throat> the answer dates back to the late 19th century and is woven into many of the historical events of our city. The Snowshoe Club was the town's first sports organization. Mr. Hull, a wealthy resident of Saratoga, was a member of this club. He and his friends had heard about the great winter sport of tobogganing in Canada and decided it should be in Saratoga Springs. The Woodland Park Toboggan Club was established January 1, 1885. A toboggan chute was built on the east side of Broadway, where Skidmore is today. This became so popular, the owners of Glen Mitchell offered to rent their land to the club, and three chutes were built at the end of North Broadway, where the Saratoga Middle School is presently located. This sign from the James Luster collection of the Saratoga Room for the Library, it designates the nine usable toboggans per Mr. Hall, chairman of the slide committee. Daily Saratoga in February 1885 stated Saratoga Woodlawn Park Toboggan Club of Saratoga Springs, an organization that constructed the initial toboggan slide in the United States and has contributed greatly towards the popularizing this healthful outdoor winter sport. Tobogganing Tobog became so popular, special trains were run from New York City to four or five sites in and around Saratoga Springs. William H. Vanderbilt, a famous, of the famous Vanderbilt family, hosted a train to the slides from New York City, complete with dinner. Slides were 242 feet long with a vertical drop of 70 feet. At first, oil lamps were used to, at night to light the slides, but in 1889, electric lights were installed, making for a brilliant winter spectacle. After 1890, the slides were closed and never reopened. This picture shows an old tobogan slide on the shores of Lake Lonely. I remember this rusty structure when fishing as a child in Lake Lonely. I inquired at the time what it was and was told it was a tobogan slide that was once on Saratoga Lake. Skating in Converse Park was a holiday tradition. You could see the top of the Grand Union Hotel in the background. The first Saratoga Springs skating rink was built by Seymour Ainsworth in 1840. He dammed a small stream that flowed on Church Street, which made a big pond and froze to form a rink. In 1860, Street Superintendent Thomas Eldridge made a skating rink at the same site, complete with a warming house, and skating became a popular pastime. This is a photo from the George Bolster collection. <coughs> the accompanying article to the 1921 Saratogian headline said, Winter Sports Committee has built two jumps, a 10-foot and 4-foot for beginners. The jumps were on the hill in the rear of Ross Ketchum's garage today behind the Parkview condos. In order for skaters to keep warm during the street, extreme cold weather and a place to adjust their skates, the committee has taken over one large room of the basement of the casino where a wooden floor has been laid over the cement. Here skaters are on the lake in the city park. George Bolster, a photo 1922 of a hockey game in Congress Park. Early ice skates, we have some of those on display here. This collection of old skates is in a room of the Saratoga History Museum in Canfield Casino. The museum also has a collection of old winter club skating uniforms. These ribbons are in Elmer Greenwood scrapbooks. It refers to the Saratoga Winter Club, but you'll note the gentleman's on snowshoes. The earliest date of the name, the Saratoga Winter Club for Speed Skating was incorporated in 1930. 
The club was preceded by the Saratoga High School skating team. In June 1933, record, SHS recorder, a picture of the high school skating team. Green, Captain Carney, Rhodes, Solomon, and Margaret Swarda. The team defeated Waterbury, Draper, Scotia, and Mount Pleasant in the 1932-33 competitions. Team picture at the third annual Saratoga Winter Carnival. Left to right, Jack Carney, Vern Green, Ed Taylor, Tom Rhodes, Link Salomon, and Will Gale Coach, kneeling Jack Shallon and Jimmy Wilcox. Mm. The earliest picture I found of the skating club members taken in Brooklyn, New York, had to be in their early 20s. In 1924, speed skating and figure skating were included in the official program of the first Winter Olympics in Chamonix, France. It looks like Phil Carney is giving skating instructions. This 1925 program states that the event is under the auspices of the Saratoga Springs Skating Association and the Winter Sports Committee. Two names on the program I can say I knew and I'm sure older members of the audience can as well. Frank McGurr, Eugene Lynch, also Ted Shallon, Lucas Croxton. Races were measured in yards not meters as it's a unit of measure today. Also, the program included match races, barrel jumping, backward skating, and other exhibition events. The 1932, this 1932 program with R.W. Walton's name on it is now under the auspices of the Saratoga Winter Sports Club. The first Eastern States Outdoor Championships were held at the East Side Field in 1931. Skating was one of the city's winter carnival attractions. Uniforms say the KSC. Leads me to believe this team was funded from the local KSC. Left to right, Bill Kirkpatrick coach, Len Shallon, John Fetish, Jim Cundy, Vern Green, John Williams, Bob Shallon, and Alton Coleman. These photos are from an article about the founders of the recreation field by Dr. N.C. Powers. In 1921, William Eddy on the right, a local merchant, organized local YMCA directors to purchase the site of the recreation field. It would be an athletic field for the city's youth. C.L. Mosier, superintendent of schools on the left, worked with Eddy to transfer the property to the Saratoga Board of Education in 1926. In 1937, through a WPA project, a field house was built. The field house was dedicated to William Eddy Field House. William Eddy was also the fifth mayor of the city from 1928 to 1931. The field house was a warming house for all skating activities and generations of local athletic events. As soon as weather permitted, the rectangular field in front of the field house was flooded. To hold skating competitions, a 220-yard rink was marked. It was called an eight-lap track, the number of laps needed to complete a mile. Flooding the rink. The east side recreation field was first flooded in 1923. Vern laid the ice sheet at the recreation field for many years and later helped with the ice sheet at the Spa State Park. Ice preparations would begin around 2 a.m. Gary Talbot said in his in the summer, Vern and his men would go to a clay bank north of the city and bring back clay to the wreck. They spread the clay on the ground to help hold the water in the winter months. Here Vern shows an early starting pose. Vern was a competitor, club coach, manager, and ice maker. In 1936 program, it's now the Saratoga Winter Club. Skaters in the program, Vern Green, James Cudney, Art Whitford, club names, Albany Mercury, New York Sporting Club, Ford Johnson AA, Schenectady AAA, Saranac AC, Lake Placid AC, and many others. Thought the back ad of the 1936 program interesting of Riley's Lake House. Okay. Mu music by Bernie Collins Orchestra while you enjoyed Frog's Lakes which I'm sure came from the marshlands around Saratoga Lake. <laughs> <laughs> the 
The third annual Winter Carnival Program, 1938, sponsored by the Saratoga Winter Club, the Saratoga Ski Club, and the Saratoga Springs Chamber of Commerce. Events included a basketball game, entertainment, a carnival ball, a convention hall, and the photos from the 1938 city directory of the Saratoga Winter Club 1937 parade float. In 1938, the Eastern State skating, Speed Skating Championships were at Cateros Park on Saratoga Lake. The Eastern State Championships were also held one year at Yaddo, otherwise they were always held at the rec. Skating across the finish line on Saratoga Lake. You can see the bath, back house, or bath house in the background. Mickey Green Talbot tells me that's her mother, Dorothy Kirkpatrick Green, second skater in the photo. Barrel jumping was a part of a winter skating program. George Croyer, Balsam Spa, also a Saratoga Winter Club qualified for this event at Grossinger's Country Club in Grossinger's, New York. Another view of the early ice sport. Picture says 1922 of competition and crowd at the East Side Rec. It looks to me to be later than 1922. When I asked Rich Worcester why Saratoga, why the Eastern States Championship became so pop, such a popular event, he felt it was because it was so centrally located on the East Coast between New York City, Buffalo, and Boston. Robert Walton was the first president of the Saratoga Winter Club when it was established in 1930. Bob started life in Providence, Rhode Island, worked in New York City, and then after World War I, started an ignition and battery shop in Saratoga Springs. He added sporting goods and later devoted his total business to sporting goods. Walt is located on Lake Avenue next to the Military Museum. Bob devoted many years of actively involved in the local club. He announced as well as judged at various meets for the Northern New York Skating Association. He also organized the first four-man bobsled team, of which he was the driver at Mount Van Hogeberg run at Lake Placid in 1935. This 1962 photo shows Bob attaching a speaker to a helicopter to promote the Eastern States Speed Skating Championships weekend events. Robert Walton plaque in the History Museum. Also Bob enjoying a quiet moment with his grandson. From the scrapbooks of Elmer Greenwood in the Saratoga Room of the Library, you can learn a lot about history of skating in the Northeastern United States. Here we see representatives from all skating clubs in the Northeast that joined together to form the Northern New York Skating Association, or NNYSA. Robert Walton among its founders and first president. The organizational meeting was held at the Worden Hotel in 1931. This picture looks like a Northern New York Skating Association meeting in the 1940s. The Northern New York Skating Association applied for admission into the Amateur Skating Union in 1934 and was admitted in January of 1936. Jack Carney, a Saratoga Winter Club skater in the early 30s, won the Adirondack Skating Championship three times in the Eastern, Division, the Eastern New York Division and the Northern New York Division the last year it was conducted. In 1935, he won a skating scholarship to the University of Southern California, a major sport. While skating at the Cow Palace, a scout of Sonia's head, he saw him and said, you're pretty good on those long blades. How would you like to try figure skates? As they say, the rest is history. Jack quit school and joined Sonia Henney's Ice Follies, a program of Sonia Henney's Hollywood Ice Review at the Boston Garden, 1938, is pictured. Jack's name appears in the program as the Tin Soldier in the production of Toyland. Also a watch given to Jack with the inscription on the back, Jack Carney, sign you. Jack was in four of Sonya's movies. The song is from the movie Sun Valley Serenade. Jack had a lure for the sea, so in 1939, he joined the shipping division of the Texas Oil Company. This led 
to dodging Japanese ships in the South Pacific during World War II. Some of my computer skills. <laughs> Here, Jack, Don Kelly, and James Neal picture a float, are picture preparing a float for the Saratoga Winter Club in 1958. Jack retired from the General Electric Company after 21 years in 1977. In retirement, he became the chief engineer on the Minnehaha before his passing in 1983. The ladies team, 1938-42, some of the names, Nancy Manning, Ann Jones, Grace Dyer, Blanche Armstrong, Harriet Nagel, Dorothy Kirkpatrick, uh, Green, uh, Brenda Kramer, and Dorothy Dyer. 3940 Club. Check the heavy uniforms they had. <laughs> Art Van Dyke, Claxton Whitbeck, Doc Kirkpatrick, Jack Shannon, Blanche Armstrong, Rose Steiniger, Bill, Bill Shannon, and Bob Phillips. <coughs> The marking says 1959, however, the article is of the 1940-41 club skaters, coached by Bud Lynch. The team won 36 individual champions and six North American titles. Some of the names of the skaters, Whitcup, Kirkpatrick, Perch, Shallon, Carroll, and Ferguson. The planner skate in the advertisement of the 1946 program was a skate used by skaters for several decades. The notice on the opposite page says the Eastern States Championships was not held in 1945 as 10 members of the club were in the armed forces. In the late 30s, Ted Shallon set a record-breaking times but gave up skating after graduating from high school. The article said he was content to watch his brother Len become the greatest speed skating star to carry the mail for the Saratoga Winter Club. Johnny Jones, sports editor of the Saratoga, headed up a committee fund to purchase Len skates after he learned Len was using the nine-year-old blades of his brother. June 15, 1944, Len was flying a P-47 over Lavelle, France, when wintering fire completely stopped the engine and he had to bail out. He landed in a cornfield. After three days of wandering, he met a friendly farmer who put him in touch with the French resistance. They hit him for several weeks before the American Reconnaissance Group liberated him. There's a book about the French resistance, resistance 1939 and 1945 called The Agents for Escape. The author says Len was to become a very good friend, boisterous and unbearable at times. <laughs> he got so devoted and warm. Len's exploits during this time are very enjoyable and worth the read. And my cousin Margaret, Eddie, who's just here to, with us today, tells me he was a very good dancer. <laughs> and you can get that book, not, it, they don't have it in this library, but they can get it for you. I have read it, I think they get it out of a library in Clifton Park. Elmer Green went on a left with Bud Lynch at a meeting in the 1950s. I mentioned the work needed to prepare the ice, but other volunteers are needed to conduct the meet on and off ice officials, as well as the people who prepare, prepare the soup and chili in the field house for the skaters and spectators. There is a fireplace in the field house where skaters and spectators warm up between events. Makes me think Vern helped out with the building of the, the design building. Here Saratoga Springs Commissioner Paul Hilbo is giving club members a trophy for participation in the 1959 parade. A host of 1959-60 six, skaters with Vern Green, coach. You heard me mention Dorothy Kirkpatrick and Vern Green as members of the Saratoga Winter skating team. Well, it's of destined they become good friends and marry. This picture was taken of them in the East Side Recreation Field in the early 30s. Their daughter, Michelle Mickey Green Talbot, became a national skating championship, and granddaughter Kristen Talbot Peck, a three-time Olympian. Here are the Green children, Dale, Mickey in the middle, and Carrie, admiring the three-mile Saratoga Trophy in 1954. And there's a copy of it right over there, the real thing. 
Photo on the left was Vern Green, was third in the division of the 880, as well as first place skaters Gail Purdy Brophy, Dave Dunlap, Jim Brophy, and Vern Daughters Mickey Green. Photo on the right, Mickey Green at age seven skated to an almost perfect score, winning seven championships throughout the East Coast in her division. Inclement weather forcing her to miss one competition that prevented the sweep. Rich, John, and Dave Worcester. Rich told me they started skating as members of the Glens Falls, Glens Falls Club. They lived in Boston Spa and the Saratoga Winter Club had a rule. You had to live in Saratoga Springs to be a member. Most likely one of the old carpetbagger rules. <laughs> Rich said he would uh, Rich said they weren't admitted to the Saratoga Winter Club but until 1958, but he attended their training sessions. Vern Green was the coach. The Worcesters, Gail Purdy Brophy, and other Saratoga Winter Skaters trained at Yaddo as the ice froze earlier than the wreck. They had to shovel the snow first. John said that was part of the workout. In fact, in 1964, Richie attributes his skating back and forth on the Yaddo Pond that helped improve his technical aspects of his skating. Two senior skaters, Gail and Richie, get ready for the 1963 Eastern States. From the late 50s throughout the 60s and the early 70s, four skaters from the Saratoga Winter Club dominated skating titles. Gail, Mickey, Richie, and John. Gail also a member of the Glens Falls Club. Gail said her dad, George Purdy, then president of the Glens Falls Club, the Worcester's father, Augie, and Bud Lynch from the Saratoga Winter Club, decided to disband the Glens Falls Club and admit, admit these skating speedsters into the Saratoga Winter Club. One of Gail's many triumphs was beating Gene Ashworth, a 1960 Olympic bronze medalist. The 1960 Olympics was the first time women for women speed skaters. Photo on the right, Richie is congratulated after winning his first outdoor national championship on Lake Como in, in Minneapolis, 1965. Gail Purdy Brophy inducted into the Saratoga Springs Sports Hall of Fame in 1994. Gail won the 1961-63 National Women's Amateur Golf Championships while capturing five national speed skating championships from 1957 through 1965 as a member of the Saratoga Winter Club. Elmer Greenwood was also inducted at the same time as Gail. Gail has confirmed the Eastern States was skated at Yaddo in the middle of in the mid 50s the ice on Saturday at the wreck became too soft. She said they finished the Sunday races on the pond at Yaddo. Gail also told me on a trip to Norway to learn metric skating, she was wearing the gray uniform of the Winter Club at the time, which had Saratoga across the back. And one traveler asked her if she was off the battleship Saratoga. <laughs> 1956 team, Steve Riley, a tall fellow in the center, has been a long time member of the skating club, skating from 1949 to 1958, then returning in the 70s. Steve's been past president of the local club as well as the Northern Yard Skating Association. Steve is also an international star qualified to start Olympic races. Steve remembers biking to Yaddo using the ponds for ice games and training. The 1978 photo on the right is an older Steve Riley helping Mary Brophy. Mayor Arthur Carney congratulates skaters on their wins at the Pittsfield Meet in 1965. Mickey Green Talbot, Elaine Kirkpatrick, and Kathy Sullivan. Nineteen sixty nine, Johnny Worcester showing the handsome tray one after capturing the senior men's title. Richie is shown with three mile Saratoga Cup trophy, of which he retired twice. You had to have three legs on the trophy to retire. In one retirement of the trophy, Rich won the race four consecutive years. Johnny also retired the trophy once after winning it three times in a row, the last being at the Spa State Oval, 1976. 
and Ice Palace welcome skaters to the 25th Annual Eastern States, erected by the Walton Sports Shop. In 1961, the 29th Eastern States had a record 344 skaters. Here skaters are skating the turn at the 3,000 meter event in 1961. I'm sure Rich Worcester is somewhere in that pack. The ice at the recreation field was open to the public, and I'm sure many of you can remember driving by the rink and seeing people enjoying the ice rink. The local grade schools also held international or held inter school competitions. The school with the most overall points took home the trophy. The Saratoga in the 1969 photo shows club members preparing the heat cards for the first round of heats at the following day's events. Back then, heat cards were written and typed. During the, meet, re, during the meet, results of each race were sent back to the clerks to see the next round. Now this task is done by computers. Skaters have an ankle band that holds a computer chip. A wire frozen in the ice at the finish line sends each skater's lap time to the computer, and the computer sees the next round of races. In this picture, there's uh, at the typewriter, Doris Neal, John Picklehop, Stretch Dunlap, Jim Neal, Elmer Greenwood, and Hazel Spencer. The Spencer family was involved in the club for many years. Hazel's son, Ernie, and their children, David and Katie, skated as well. Tom Knappick, a 16-year-old intermediate, took the 1957 and 1975 class trophy at the Eastern Seaboard Meet in Lake Placid, giving the Saratoga Winter Club their highest point total since 71. I know Charlie Kenz will appreciate this. I've heard some of the skaters beaten by Saratoga Winter Club skaters would declare there's something in the water here. <laughs> John Worcester admiring hard work of Maura DeAndre and Barney Pimentel. Maura won a national championship in each age class. Maura and her brother John meet the story at Lynch Allen. Yep. <laughs> at the top is a picture of skaters in the 400 meter oval at the Spa State Park. In 1976-77, the New York State Department of Parks and Recreation built the oval with the encouragement and help of the Saturday Winter Club. The 46th Eastern States held at the Spa Oval January 1977. A warm-up shed was also constructed. In order to have the skaters closer to the ice sheet, a tent was erected seen in the picture below. In the early 1990s, with a tightening state budget, the Winter Club had to take over the total maintenance and electrical costs. When weather conditions caused us to lose the ice at the spa, the city invited us back to the east side field for the 60th Eastern States Outdoor Championships. As constant cold weather needed for outdoor ice faded, the club's focus turned to in an indoor rink. There was also a new indoor skating event called short track skating. Saratoga Springs' first indoor ice rink was built in 1970 on the corner of East Avenue and Excelsior by the Saratoga Springs Youth Commission for 112000 One side was open but covered with plastic. It served not only the Saratoga Winter Club, but the Saratoga Spring High School and Skidmore hockey teams. Also figure skaters and recreational skaters. In 1993-94 was the last season at the Excelsior Rink. It wasn't an area for spectators except a small space at the end of the rink. The skate changing area was kept warm with a wood fired stove. Saratoga Winter Club coaches knew our skaters toughing it out in the freezing temperatures when only excel in competitions at classier rinks around the country. It served the skaters well until the present rink was ready to open on Weibel Avenue in 1994. Casey Wager in the red jacket, a Saratoga Winter Club master skater and club coach. Casey coached many of the youngsters in the late 70s and 80s. They were known as Casey's Kids. Pictured on the left with Casey, Mike Tamarino, Aaron Porter, Kristen Brophy, Kneeling, John Tamarino, and Jimmy Cooley. October 1992, after eight years of planning and being table, 300 citizens attended the city council meeting 
to encourage a positive vote for the Olympic size rink on Wyville Avenue. This rink cost $1.65 million. It was predicted to be a financial burden to the city. However, it was soundly in the black and a second rink was added a year or so later. The Olympic size rink, 100 by 200 meters, has ample seating, reception area, locker rooms, and a boxing rink. Today, Specially designed impact pads are tied in place around the rink to cushion if a skater falls and slides to the edge of the rink. In the first indoor rink, old mattresses were used and weren't very efficient. It was a challenging job placing those mattresses on the ice. Paul, a national skating competitor, or a, yeah, national skating competitor from Albany, who joined the Saratoga Winter Club. After Competing, he became an international recognized skate builder as well as a technical representative for the U.S. and China at three Winter Olympics. Today, he is still developing skates and also helps with coaching at the local club. <coughs> One of Paul's long track skates. The blade is hinged to the boot, allowing the blade to stay on the ice longer, melting the ice for better and longer gliding surface. A competition skater's boot are custom made. The skater's feet are molded and then the boot is designed around the mold. Short track blades are offset to the left side of the boot and blade is slightly bent to the left. Both long and short track skates have a radius of the blade, meaning the slope of the cutting edge of the blade. Short track skates have a more of a definition than the long track skates. This picture of the Olympic Oval in Salt Lake City gives you a better comparison of short track rink the inner ice, 110 meters, and long track outer ice, 400 meters. Moving indoors changed skating considerably. No longer did skaters have to encounter changing weather conditions or inferior natural ice. A Zamboni treats the ice to ideal skating surface. Pat Maxwell told me sometimes on natural ice, and I'm sure others can attest to it, that the more heats run, the ice would get soft and chopped up. It was then necessary to run through those areas rather than glide. Olympic short track distances are skated pack style. The distance skated determines how many skaters will go to the line. Olympic long track distances are skated against the clock. Two skaters skating in separate lanes cross over on the back side of the rink compensating for any inner or outer lane advantages. In early 2000, there was an attempt to establish a speed skating museum, museum and hall of fame here, but unfortunately the needed funds were not available. Museums are a hard sell and their development and operation comes mainly from donations. The artifacts were transferred to the Pettit National Ice Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but the same fate has taken place there. A wall of fame was established, but the artifacts are still in storage. Becoming an Olympian takes many years of competitions and training. The termination of these nine Saratoga winter athletes has brought them to the highest level of the sport. Not a member of the Saratoga Winter Club, I felt Dick should lead off our Olympians. He was Saratoga's first Olympian. I remember my excitement reading about Dick Severino's accomplishments as a youngster. Morris, Maurice Dick Severino grew up on Locust Grove Road in Saratoga Springs and a member of the U.S. bobsled team at the 1952 Winter Olympics in Oslo, Norway. Severino's sled career spanned 20 years. He piloted two and four man sleds for America in the World Championships six times. Richie on the left was U.S. Olympic Team 1968, John Olympic Team member 1968 and 72. Rich and John were also inducted this year into the Boston Spa Athletics Hall of Fame. John told me because he skated long track, they wouldn't let him try out for the 1976 World Short Track Team. At an earlier international event, skating against the same competitors, John won every race. <coughs> Pat Maxwell believes to this day Johnny would have been the world short track champion that year if he had a chance. 
Far surpassing Pat's record as a competitor is Pat's record as a coach of short track skaters. Pat is noted for his innovative approach to teaching and development. He has conducted development camps over 100 training seminars and has since his retirement from competition. He has produced a video on short track training and technique. Pat was the Olympic short track team coach from 98 to 2002, five Olympic teams. He began coaching the Winter Club skaters in 1976 and he continues today. Amy Peterson Pack was a member of the Minnesota Club and came here to train under Pat Maxwell and today is a Saratoga Winter Club coach. Amy was a five-time Olympian and three-time Olympic medalist. Amy had the honor of being the U.S. flag bearer at the opening ceremonies of the 2002 Olympics in Salt Lake. Kristen was an accomplished skater in both long and short track competition. She was a member of the World Short Track Team in 1989 and three Olympic long track teams. Kristen was born into a skating family. Besides Moore's participation in three Olympics, Moore skated the World Cup circuit from 1986 to 1989. Moore was one of the first Olympic short track team members in Calgary as an exhibition event in 1988. Injuries are a constant threat of aspiring athletes. Moore suffered two almost career-ending accidents in 91 and 96. She overcame both adversities to succeed at the Olympic trials, securing her place on the team. Moore later became speed skating coach for the Canadian national team. Two-time Olympic team member David might have been your paper boy. He paid for his skating expenses with money earned delivering the Saratoga. David won national championships as a short track and long track skater. Today, David is Director of Development Corporation and Foundation Relations for Marquette University and is studying there to be a lawyer. Aaron, a two-time Olympic member, 97 short track champion, and medalist in the world competitions. This year, Aaron graduated with a doctorate degree in physical therapy from the University of Washington, and today happens to be her birthday. <laughs> Trevor Marcicano at the 2010 Winter Olympics. Marcicano won a silver medal for his part in the team pursuit. Bonnie Blair Krupschek in the red visited the Spa City in 2011 to help raise funds for the National Junior Championships being held here. Bonnie's seen here with Kristen Talbot Peck, Amy Peterson Peck, and the Worcesters, John and Richie. Parents of Olympians, Mora, Amy, Aaron, in Nagano, Japan, 1988 Winter Olympics. In the front, Betsy Porter, Joan Peterson, and Mary Ellen DeAndre. In the back, me, Joe DeAndre, the young lady from the home where DeAndre stayed, and Howard Peterson. Seven members of the Saratoga Winter Club have been recognized by the national governing body for their participation in the, winter, in the sport, either as a skater or a contributor. The date shown are the date of induction. Elmer Greenwood in 1979, longtime member of the Saratoga Winter Club and national chief judge. Elmer collected antique skates and recorded the club's history. Eugene Bud Lynch, 1981, competitor, coach, promoter, national official, and he was also on the, US, or on the uh, USC team in California. Johnny Worcester in 1985 was a national outdoor and North American Indoor Champion. Rich held many titles from 65, long track titles from 65 to 71. I told you all about that. Kristen Peck, Talbot Peck, 2004. It has not always been skating for the Talbot family and Kristen. Prior to the 94 Olymp Olympics, Kristen's brother Jason encountered a life-threatening disease. Kristen interrupted her training. As Kristen said, donating bone marrow to her brother was more important than any other than another Olympics. Kristen did make the 94 Olympic team, and Jason, a national skating champion as well, is doing just fine. After being president of a local club in the Northern New York Skating Association, I was president of the ASU, one of the two national governing bodies at that time. As president of the ASU, discussions with USISA began and ultimately led to the merger of the two organizations. 
And I want to add, I think the Saratoga Warner Club played a big part in that merger because the president of the US ISA at the time, the International Skating Association was, uh, 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 his name Pat Gail, help me out with him. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, God. Why does his name go away? I know him so well. From Minnesota. You know what I'm talking about. You skated with him. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know why I lost his name. Anyways, he skated here in Saratoga for several years, and he used to like to talk to me about skating in Saratoga, and he thought we had such a great club here. And in those conversations, we also started talking about why the two organizations should come together. And I think because I was from Saratoga, and he had skated here in Saratoga, and he admired Saratoga skating so much, that uh, you know that that uh, merger actually happened. Amy Peterson. Today's short track skater wears a skin tight suit made of Kevlar material, and we have a, some of those up here on the, the table. A neck guard, helmet, and gloves. When a short track skater is skiing a turn, the left hand touches the ice helping them maintain their balance. The fingertips of the left hand glove are usually plastic tipped. Here local skaters are listening to Paul at a practice session. The club has three sessions a week at the local rink. Younger skaters are kept in the middle of the rink. Here Johnny Worcester in the blue holds a supporting frame for his grandson Noah. Aaron in the middle is supporting her son Connor. Hudson Peck with the yellow sleeves gates over with words of encouragement. <laughs> Last month, the Sarah Owner Club hosted an America Cup event for elite skaters at the local rink. About 130 skaters from across the U.S. participated. In October of this year, two Saratoga Winners Club skaters qualified for the World Log Track team, Petra Acker and Trevor Marsicano. At the end of this month, five members of the will be competing to represent the USA as well as the Saratoga Winter Club at the 2014 Olympics in Sochi, Russia. Besides Petra and Trevor, Bryony Farrell, Katie Ralston, and Matt Rittenhouse will hopefully qualify. <coughs> this is the present Winter Club site where you can keep up on present day activities. If you click on the gallery section, you'll see many candid photos of the club's activities. There is a developing alumni section. Saturday, July 12th this year, my son-in-law, P.J. Ripjack, today's Saratoga Work Club president, is planning an alumni get-together. You can friend the Saratoga Winter Club also on Facebook. The Genez Cortez print of the skating on the infield pond at the Saratoga track is entitled, The Winter Place to Be. Jeanette must have become aware of skating's history in our city. I actually did skate on the infield pond as a youngster, one of the two times I can remember being on skates. It wasn't as picturesque as Cortez painting. I also know entry was, not, was more covert than in the picture. <laughs> Here are three legends of the sport get together in 1985. These three men and many others have contributed to the story club history of the club over the years. I have only shown a few of the highlights. Generations of the city's youth have enjoyed skating. All have benefited from the social and physical aspect of the sport. A winter sport and recreation activity that began 83 years ago still continues today. I want to thank the staff of the Saratoga River the Library, City Historian Mary Ann Fitzpatrick, Fitzgerald, Jack Carney's daughter, Anne, the Talbots, the Andrews, the Worcesters, Gail, Brophy, Bob Walton III, and Steve Riley for their help. And now we do have some of the uh, Olympians here and the people that participated, and I'd like to introduce them if you have any questions you'd like to ask them. Richie Worcester. Anybody. I guess those are our two skaters. 
If they have anything that you'd like to ask them about their time in skating, go ahead. Richie, you look like your father. Special <laughs> <laughs> him. Yep, yep, exactly. <laughs> no, I have my father. I walk like him, I talk like oh, yeah. him. <laughs> Tom, do you have parents of Olympians? Did I what? Do you have parents of some of these people you've shown in the uh, audience? Yeah, uh, Joe DeAndre is here. Joe Want to show some of the um, equipment? Show us some of the the artifacts that you brought today. Explain what they are. This is a uh, an old jacket. I don't really know how old. Maybe Dale can tell us the date on it. It was a '60s jacket. And this is an old airplug. And this is about the, what the skate looked like for many years. When, that, that was what everybody skated on. Now today, this is a Kevlar undergarment. It's what the short trackers wear, and it's cut resistance. It's like what the uh, you know, policemen have, and uh, they have bulletproof jackets, jackets and so forth. It's made out of sand material. And that goes... Oh, underneath this outfit here. They were both? Wow. Yeah. They were both. So they wear that over the other? Yeah, they wear this yeah. over this here. Wow. This is my grandson's outfit. <laughs> <laughs> they also have these gloves, which are cut resistance as well. Wow. And they have a neck guard, which goes around to protect their neck. That's all for short They have to, they have to, you can't get on the ice without it. Short set. Short set. And then they have an ultra. And then this is the skate. And then they have what they call a long track skate, which is the one I showed you in the picture, which has the hinge on it. And this is Richie's trophy right here. He won that twice. And he had had three had won the race three times in order to take that home. Wow. And he's retired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they make trophies that way. <laughs> I'm just gonna say back to the short track uniform. The world team and the national teams, the Olympic teams, their uniform is made out of the Kevlar. They don't wear the two piece. They, theirs is all, so all oh, yeah. but they're very expensive, so the kids all have this undergarment that they can keep wearing as they grow until it fits them, and then, um, and then their uniform over the top. But the elite skaters all have a one piece that's made of How much that? I don't know, a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. they're, they're too expensive for the kids to buy because they don't grow them all the time. Yeah. 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 That's all the stuff we got. That's always fun. That was a fun presentation. Thank you. We had it with a 3,000 miles. How many names are on this one? This one? And the other three names are rich. Well, that's only since the one before that was retired. Right. In 1959. 
Okay. Yes. At the beginning of the presentation, you had mentioned about uh, one of the toboggan slides by Lake Only. Right. Is that still there today or no? No. 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 It's gone, yeah. But it was there for a long time. Yeah. Because yeah, I remember seeing it. Oh, what do you got here? This is a. Uh, this was one of the sweaters that uh, uh, the, the skaters get um, when they when they make an Olympic team. This, is, this was the '94 um, team. So they get all sorts of um, clothing, and this was one of them. Priceless. Priceless. Yeah, it is. Parents also uh, have a habit of uh, collecting uh, pins when they go to these competitions. And you'll see Aaron Porter has a pin here. And his daughter also has a pin. But uh, they, um, they actually do a uh, team pin. They get, um, and just um, and they trade pins with the other countries. So um, it's, it's quite a it's quite a thing. Oh no, <laughs> we have a lot of them. <laughs> So, That's wonderful. So you wear these, and you, know, you wear these, and then people come up and they, they want to trade with you. Yeah, this one here. This one was um, um, Skylerville. Some of the people in Skylerville did this as a fundraiser, for them. and then I think they did the same thing for Aaron. Right? That's, that was a fundraiser. <laughs>